In this episode, we're going to look at swipey commands. Swipey commands is a new concept that is introduced on the Granime 3. Uh, it wasn't uh, a thing on Granime 1 or Granime 2, but uh, they introduced it now. And when I saw it for the first time, I wasn't really sure if it was a thing I was going to use because, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of buttons on the desk and we can put macros in the windows and stuff like that. So the reason why it being uh, being there was kind of weird to me. But now I tried starting to use it and I think it's really, 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 really cool. But what is swipey commands? The way we used to work is you go into the group window, for instance, uh, and then you say, okay, I have all my Vipers. I want to activate them. I can say add full, and then I can move them around. If I want to store this somewhere, I can go up into my command section up here, open the window, go down and locate the store button. I can close the command section, and then I can store position preset right here. That's kind of cool. But the new thing is that now you can store it directly here without having to open the command section for the most common commands. So if we say this one, we just save this one. Maybe if we try to delete it, we can press it and hold the mouse down or your finger if you're working on a real console. And then you simply drag the mouse outside the preset box and then this appears. And this is the swipe piece. So if we say, okay, now we save the preset right here, but we want to delete it, we don't want it anyway. We can simply, while we're still holding the mouse or the finger on the screen, you can simply hold your mouse on top of delete and let go, and it's gone. So now if we want to program uh, positions, for instance, like we did before, we can say, okay, we find a nice position right here, and we can press an empty one and drag it outside and say store. Now we stored a preset and we didn't have to open the command section. This works for some some different things, uh, but not for everything, of course, but, uh, but for the most common commands, copy, move, delete, uh, stuff like that, it works. So basically now we made our first position and now we can uh, start building our show here, our palettes as we, uh, as we prepared for last time. We set up our 3D view last time and uh, we can start programming uh, uh, some uh, fixture positions. I hope you like these videos, and uh, if you do, please uh, give the video a thumbs up. That will mean a lot to us, and maybe even subscribe to the channel to be notified when we upload new videos. So right now, my Vipers are in the first position. Right now, they're just pointing straight out. What we can do now, as we did in the last one, we can take our Align tool. The Align tool will fan the fixtures one way or the other way, depending on which which one of these you choose. Uh, but if we want to fade them to center or from center, you can simply have the dash here like we did last time, and then you can dial, dial the pan here, and it will fan from center and out. Uh, on the Granime 1, uh, or sorry, on the Granime 2, the align uh, function for this was uh, this one and the previous one, I don't know why they changed it, but uh, let's see if we can make it work. So we just clear again, take all the Vibers, turn them on, put them on preset 1, and then take the align function, the first one, the dash, and then just fan them out a little bit. Then we can say, okay, this is our second position. We simply drag it outside the box and say store. There we go. And we merge it in. So we want to make, let's say we want to make four positions. We tilt it up, and we have a uh, maybe into the audience position here. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. We store this one. And then we can take it all the way up into the air. And we store this right here. Now, we made four presets with our Vipers. Uh, our positions right here and we didn't have to go into the command section one time what we can do is continue and say okay we want to label these presets we do it again we push it we drag it outside the box and we say label and we can just say position one we can say position two we can say audience 
And we can say maybe roof. There we go. Now we just saved our four positions on stage. So let's uh, continue and say, okay, what else can we do about these uh, pallets and, and, and positions like this? We need we have our vipers up here. We just saved our four positions. But when I push my auras, you can see they, they're kind of grayed out. And that's because there's no information inside these pallets that is uh, referring to the uh, auras. So let's just do the same thing and save our four positions similar to the other ones. We'll just take the first one like this one and we drag it out and we say store and we merge it then we fan it out a little bit like the other ones we store it into position number two and we merge then we take it to the audience like this and we merge it in here and then we point it up into the roof like this or into the air and we store it into this one. There you go. Now we made our four positions for our Vipers and our Auras, and we didn't even leave this window. Under normal circumstances, you would have to open this one and say store, and then close it and push a button. Or you could write store in the command line. We'll get back to the command line uh, in a later tutorial because you can actually do everything from here as well. But uh, that's <laughs> that's for a different tutorial. So while we're at it, let's uh, let's make some colors. Let's take the vipers and let's just uh, no, let's actually do something different. Let's just take the first viper and that's called seven o one. I push that one and only this fixture appears. Let's go. Uh, play with the colors a little bit. We, we don't have any colors lined up right now. We have the colors down here. And of course we can, uh, if we turn it on like this, we can mix some colors and, and start playing around with it. But of course there's an easier way to do that. We want to make our color presets up here uh, in this uh, color pool up here. But we need to make a view with our color picker first. So what we can do now is uh, delete our screen. We have our view stored up here, like we did in one of the first episodes of the tutorial. If we push that one up here, remember we could delete this screen over here. If we push that button under the display tab, it's black. And then we push the button up here, or just push uh, any area in, inside the, 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 the black part of the screen. And we, under the common, select our color picker. And that opens up a color picker. You have four different ways of doing it. You have the swatch book where you can go in and say, okay, I want a Lee color. And if you are old like me, you will remember 181 is Congo blue and you'll remember 106 being red and, and so on. But uh, that's basically not the way we do it anymore. That's from the good old park hands. We can use our faders. We can say, okay, I want a full cyan, no magenta and no yellow. That'll just give us a cyan. Or we can take the color picker right here and say, okay, where do we want to be? Uh, for my sake, I always want to start with having an open white color on my color preset. So I can always get rid of the, any color that's, that's in the preset. So let's just drag it down to white, go back to my first view, and then we can just store this one up here. Now we made our first color preset and we forgot to store the view. So let's just do this again. Delete the screen and open the color picker and we're back. And then we can... Uh, I wonder if the swipeys are working up here. They're Actually, they're not. I hope they will someday. So we go back into this one, store this one right up here, and we just call it color. There we go. So now we can switch between those two views right here. We stored the white one up here. We can go back into the color tab, select the color picker right here, and say, okay, the next one is uh, cyan, maybe. You see it turned cyan color right here. We can use our swipe to store the cyan. We can go into the, uh, maybe a magenta. And we go back and we store the magenta color. And you see it always opens on the wrong tab right here. 
and that's a that's one of the things about views. Wherever you leave it, it's going to come back to when you store. If you store it like this, every time you push it, it's going to be like this. So if we push this one and say, okay, this is what I want to see all the time, then you can say store, and on top of the color, we say okay. And now when I go back to the view, we have our color picker. So right now we store our cyan, we store our magenta. Let's just store a yellow, maybe red color. And let's just, uh, let's just find a blue color and then let's call it a day. All right, now we stored white, cyan, magenta, yellow, red, and blue. I like to I like to label them, and we can use the swipey command to do that as well. You drag it outside the box, you label it. We label it white. We label this one cyan. We label it magenta. And we take yellow here. red and finally the blue color but remember we only stored one light inside these palettes we only took the first uh, moving light right here but we have 11 others of this type and we have 12 other uh, auras up here so what are we going to do if we clear this out and we select the vipers and we turn them on at full and we go into cyan Notice that they are all cyan right now. And that's because we just stored a global preset up here. A global preset is um, a reference to the color wheels you have on your fixtures. You have a cyan, magenta, yellow, or you have a, a RGB, or you have a, a amber, or blue, or depending on what kind of fixture it is. And the desk recognizes that if the fixture has the same parameters, you can make a global preset and then it'll work on all the moving lights. So if we clear this out and we take the auras and we turn them at full. Sorry, we need to clear out the vipers. There we go. And then we take the auras at full and we try it again up here. Now it doesn't work because it's not the same fixture. So now we save the color information for all the uh, vipers like this. Let's clear out. And let's take the auras and see, okay, now it, it's grayed out again. So we need to do the same thing again for all the auras. But we can just merge it in on top of the other one. So let's just say at full. Go into the color picker. Pick cyan and so on. And do all the other colors as well. I'm going to speed up the video right here so you, can, uh, you don't have to watch me do it uh, all over again. So now we stored all our vipers and all our auras on top of this, uh, on, on these ones. They're still global now. Uh, so now they contain the information from all the vipers and all the auras. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful with using the color picker. If you use the color picker, it will, it will be more creative for you because you can, you can find the exact blue color you want. But the danger is that you're going to lose some light because if you want to do a proper blue and only want to turn on the blue LEDs in the moving light, you would want the cyan and magenta to be at full, both of them. If you have a little bit of yellow inside or a little bit less cyan as we did right before, um, you lose a little bit of light, but then it's up to you how creative you want to be. But if you want full power, make sure just to turn on the blue LED, like you can see over here when you use the, uh, the RGB uh, color mixer over here. This is full blue, and if you see right here, it adds some red to it. So that's the danger of using the color picker, but it doesn't matter uh, which one you use as long as you're happy and as long as you, you like the way it looks. Let's clear this and then say, okay, what do we need to do now? Let's just uh, do a little bit of Gobo information. And last time I saved my Gobo information up here, but I've, I'd rather have it down here actually. So let's just close the focus window, move the Gobo down here and then drag it all the way out and then add the uh, focus information up here. So let's say we have all the vipers, we turn them at full, and we say, okay, the focus information, it's this one down here. Let's see what options we have. We have some zoom information. Let's just zoom them all the way in. And we store this 
I'd like to have the, the standard here. So this would be my normal 50%. Then we could do a narrow here and we can do a wide here, but that's up to you how you, how you want to work. So we store this one. Then we zoom it all the way out. There we go. And we store this one here. And then we see if we can find the, the default and we store this one right here. So now let's just label this. We label it and we say standard. We say narrow. And when you label these ones, you don't have to, you basically don't have to use the, the swipeys uh, and push the label button. You can just press it and say white on your keyboard. So that's the same thing, depending on how you want to work. What we can also look at on the swipe is, is some of the other uh, other things here. You can assign stuff to different views. That's also for a later tutorial. You can delete them like this. It's gone. Then we can just type, oops, down here. We can move it over here, or we can copy it over here. Let's just delete that one again. And let's just move this one back into position right here. So that's pretty cool. That's working with Swipey. Swipey is brilliant. And while we've been working with Swipey, we actually started our programming session for all this stuff up here. And uh, this is going to be the basis for when we start to program our show for real. So let's just finish it with uh, some uh, Gobo information down here and say, okay, which of these moving lights contain Gobo information? That would be the Vipers. We go into Gobo, we take Gobo number one, Gobo wheel number one, and we go into channel sets, and there you'll see the the five Gobos and the uh, the open Gobo. Uh, you can just push it and select it, and then we can store it right here. That would be the open Gobo, and dots in space. We store this right here, and you can see the Gobo appears on the palette, which is pretty cool. Then we can say happy down here. And then we can say, oh, I don't like the Lambo one. I like this one, this one. And we store this one down here. So now we have no Gobo, Gobo number one, which we want to use, the second one we want to use, and the third one we want to use. Depending on what kind of show you do, I don't know. I, I always store two, maybe three Gobos, and then, then that's going to be fine. Last but not least, we have the beam here, and the beam option is some strobe options, some iris options, some frost, and you can see right here, it says beam one of three. So this is basically page one. You have your four encoder wheels, that's number one. You pay, press it right here, and then it changes to four other options, and last but not least, you push it onto page number three, and then you have the last option. So Beware that in some cases, stuff will be hidden behind this one. You can see RGB here on the color tab. If you push it, you will have some static colors. You have some CTO, some more color mixing. Some You can tweak the color temperature if you're making a TV show. Uh, but, but just be aware if there's something you can't find, most likely it will be hidden between these ones. And somewhere right here on the right side or the left side, or I don't remember where they are, uh, there's uh, suggestions for a playlist that will cover all the episodes on our GrainMA tutorial journey. So if you want to learn GrainMA programming, or if you want to learn to use the GrainMA uh, lighting desk or the lighting console from uh, MA Lighting, uh, please uh, check one of our other videos. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.